Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Bible study as we uh, thank you, thank you, as we get prepared to discuss the end times. What is going to happen in the end times? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just sing, start off with a song of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest we worship you. Let's just pray first and then we'll start with a song of praise. Father, we give you praise, Lord, and honor. We thank you for your goodness, grace, mercy, truth. We thank you for being the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of gods, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last, the root, and the offspring, Lord God, the Son of man and the Son of God, the Lion and the Lamb, Lord God. We give you praise, Lord, and honor for being God all by yourself. All by yourself, Father. We give you praise and we honor you this evening, Lord God, as we rightly divide the word of truth, Lord God. Lord, we just give you praise and we thank you just for meeting us right where we are. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, you've been so good to me. Hallelujah, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, you've been Come on. so good to me. <laughs> Lord, you are good. Thank you, God. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, you've been so good to me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank Lord. You. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, thank you for um, tuning in with us at um, our midweek Bible study. We are um, discussing the end times. The end times. Um, and part of the reason we want to do this is, number one, we want to provide truth. Um, but number two, we really want to dispel a lot of the myths right, that there are about the end times. A lot of the myths that people believe about the end times. Um, uh, you know, like uh, one myth that we've heard is, uh, do I need someone to explain revelations to me? Um, there are some, there are some um, denominations that say, you cannot understand this book unless a priest or someone like that walks you through it. Okay, so is that true or is it not? Well, we're going to find out. Um, uh, uh, should I be afraid of the book of Revelations? Eee. Should I be afraid of the book of Revelations? Um, the answer is no, if you're a believer. Yes, if you're not. Yes, if you're not. Now, as far as the question I asked about, do I need someone to explain Revelations? The Bible says, how can they hear let's, except there be a preacher? But it does also mean that it does not mean that you have to have somebody. Um, it, uh, you cannot go into this book without 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 them. OK, um, because there, there's a lot of um, uh, things that are literal. There are things that are prophetic. There are things that happen throughout the book of Revelations. And sometimes you need someone who has maybe studied that book to kind of help you along. But as long as we have the Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit will, will guide you as to what you need, to what you need to take from the book. So let me start off with verse 1 from Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. And it says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, 
which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Listen to this. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So to that first question, do I need someone to explain it? Is it wrong for me to read the book of Revelations? Well, verse three says that there is a blessing on the person who reads this book. And there's a blessing on the person who hears the words of this book. So obviously this is saying to us that there is nothing wrong with you reading the book of Revelations. Because there are some denominations that teach that you are not to even open this book unless you have somebody with you. Okay, and so we want to dispel that myth. The, the third verse in this book says, blessed are those who read it and those who hear the words of this book. The other thing we want to, that stands out um, is that it says, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the book of Revelations is the revelation of Jesus. It tells us who Jesus is. It reveals to us who he is. That he is the main character of the story from Adam all the way to Revelations. Genesis to Revelations. All right. Now, the word eschatology is the part of theology, theology concerned with the final events in human history or the, in the history of the world and humankind. Right. So that's that word is eschatology. All right. When we think of the end times, we automatically think of the apocalypse. Now, I'm going to ask out here, um, and if anybody is watching the live, if anybody um, provides any chat, if they have questions, feel free. Feel free to um, type in your questions, and we'll try to answer those, okay? Um, and if you're in, in he, inside, you can also ask questions, and because we want to make this a, a dialogue, all right? Um, so, now when people think of the apocalypse, let me ask the room real quick. When people think of the apocalypse, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Anybody? End of the world. The end of the world. Anyone else? Armageddon. The Bible. Ar Ar Armageddon. Yeah, Lana says the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A huge meteor crashing to earth. A huge meteor crashing to earth. Okay, okay. I, I heard somebody say Armageddon. Armageddon, uh, which, which means the last battle, which is the term for the last battle. Well, if you look it up on Google, the definition provided through uh, Merriam-Webster's dictionary talks about, says that uh, uh, of the apocalypse is the end of mankind. And that's really not what the apocalypse is. The word apocalypse is actually a Greek word for the word revelation. It means revelation. It's the Greek word for the word revelation. So they just made, they took this word, the Greek word for revelation. So when we look at the book of, uh, of Revelations in the Bible, when the uh, original writers wrote it, it was apocalypse. It's just the Greek word, the Greek translation. So, um, so we want to dispel a lot of these myths when we talk about this. Now, who are some of the names mentioned or main characters or concepts we hear about, we hear about or think about when we think of the end times? What are some names or some thoughts when you think of the end times? If yes, um, Jesus. Jesus, yes, absolutely, absolutely, Jesus, and yeah. Jesus is the main character of Revelations, all right, or the main subject of Revelations. Any others? Antichrist. The Antichrist. That's a great one. Any others? Any other concepts about the end times, about the last days? Oh, saved. Say again. Oh, saved. Oh, saved. Say that again. Oh, saved. Old Satan, yes, yes, that's a great one. That's a great one. The old Satan, yes. False the false prophet. Okay, this room know the book of Revelation a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. So let me give you a few. So um, some of the the things that are going to be mentioned as we study, as we dive deep into this end times message, is of course Jesus Christ that was mentioned. The church is a main um, factor in the book of Revelations. Okay. The four horsemen. Anybody ever heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Mm -hmm. the, or the four horsemen? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, all right, well, we'll get into that. Probably not today, we may not be able to get into it today. Um, the Antichrist, we've heard of that. What about the beast? The yes. false prophet, you said that one. Uh, the two prophets, mm -hmm. the anointed ones, those are deemed the, the, the anointed ones. The thousand year reign, the rapture, the rapture. Question: What do we what do we know about? I just give. I just want to pick your brains. What do we know about the rapture? Go. We, uh, all the people that Say it. Speak real loud so that. Where all the people that believe in God like go like go into the clouds or something, and then they go to heaven. And all the people that believe in God go into the clouds. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Um. Yes, he's going to protect us when he um, takes us up. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, so we're going to be able to discuss, we're going to be able to talk about the rapture, the different concepts of the rapture. There's even thoughts, you know, is it the pre, when, 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 the, when the church is taken, is it pre, is it mid, is it post? Is it real? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Is it pre, meaning does it happen before the seven year tribulation? Does it happen in between? Does it happen at the end? These are three popular concepts when it comes to the, to the belief of the rapture. And then there's the belief that there is no rapture. Because if you search the scripture, there is the word rapture doesn't show up in the Bible. The word rapture doesn't come up in the Bible, but there's concepts that support this doctrine, right? Um, the word rapture, um, comes from a Greek word, or it's a Latin word that, uh, that, that, that the Latin word is raptos, right? Which means to be, to snatch. And this is the same word that would be used in the Greek when we hear the word caught up. When Jesus said, or Paul says, and we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. So it's not in the Bible, but the concept is the word rapture is just a word, a Latin word for the word for what we talk about being caught up or being taken. Okay, so we're going to let's take a dive into this. All right. Now, last week we discussed the, the book of Daniel. Again, if you have questions, please type your questions in the chat. Um, yes. Um, I remember it. You remember it? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, hopefully, we all retain what we are hearing, okay? Um, and so, I want to slow walk us. Last week, we talked um, in great deal about the book of Daniel. And we have to understand that the book of Revelations cannot be fully understood until you, unless you unlock or understand the book of Daniel. Daniel supports Revelations more, probably more than any other book in the Bible. Daniel supports Revelations probably more than any other book in the Bible. Okay. Now, um, uh, and I, 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 share, I, I share that one of the reasons why the, um, uh, um, the Lord, the Spirit led me to do this study on Daniel is because as we were, um, I was preparing to do this teaching and I was prepared to go right into Revelations. Um, and, and I shared this a couple weeks ago that I, I went in my, my prayer room and as I went in my prayer room, laying on top of my Bible, laying on top of my Bible was uh, a piece of paper that I wrote about eight years ago and it had Daniel on it. And I asked, I said, Lady Kim, did you? She said, no. I said, Gabby, did you? She said, no. I said, Alana, did you? She said, no. I said, Faith, did you? She said, no. Nobody put that in there. And I certainly didn't put it there. And I said, okay, God, you're telling me that we need to, teach, we need to learn about Daniel. And so that's why we're here, right? This is a spirit-led move, okay? This is a spirit-led move. All right, so um, just a quick review from Daniel. Um, Daniel chapter one talks about the captivity for, of uh, of the children of Israel and Judah into um, the children of Israel and Judah into captivity by the Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar. All right, King Nebuchadnezzar, right? Um, and it talks about those those um, Daniel and three Hebrew boys. Who 
who, who knows who the three Hebrew boys were? Come on now. All right, scholar. I see you over there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. Now, um, chapter two, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, dreams of this statue. Right. And just to give you just a quick review of this statue, he, he has this dream. Normally I would have it on screen, but we're having some technical difficulties with that. But um, he has this dream of this large statue. And this statue, the top of the statue is, the head of the statue is gold. The chest of the statue is silver. Right here and down to the waist is bronze. The thighs and the leg, the thighs are iron and the feet and the toes were iron mixed with clay. Now, if you as, as we did this study last week, I'm just going to give you a really brief review of that because this is really important that we understand that breakdown. Now, that breakdown, Nebuchadnezzar has the dream and he sees this vision of these this thing and Nebuchadnezzar can't remember the dream. So he goes to his astrologers, he goes to his magicians and his wise men and he says, I need you to give me the interpretation of the dream. They say, what's the dream? He says, I don't know the, I don't remember the dream. You tell me the dream. If you hear from God, the gods, you should be able to tell me the dream. They said, there's no way we can tell you the dream. Only God, the gods can know that. So he says, okay, since you can't tell me, tell me what the dream is, I'm going to have you put to death. So they go on this to, to be able to gather up all the, the magicians, astrologers, wise men to put them to death. Daniel hears this because because Daniel was one of the, the wise men of this kingdom of Babylon. And so he hears, he says, hey, hey what's, why so haste? He says, okay, give me some time to pray. He says, give me some time to pray and the, the God of heaven will reveal this secret to you. So he gets Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they gather together. They begin to pray. God gives them the secret of this dream. So Daniel goes before the king and Daniel is able to tell, he's able to tell the king what the dream was and then tell him, explain to him what the dream meant. All right, so let's give this quick breakdown of what this dream meant. So the head of gold represented Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. All right, under King Nebuchadnezzar, it was the head of gold. The, the, the breast or the, uh, or the chest of silver was the Medo-Persian Empire, right? So after, um, after Nebuchadnezzar had, um, after King Nebuchadnezzar and his line of reign over Babylon, the empire that took over was the Medo-Persian Empire. When we watch the, the it, for those who've seen the movie One Night with the King, mm -hmm. right? Do um, you remember that uh, where the king uh, and was it Esther, I believe, right? The queen. king and Esther. Was that Esther? Yes. Queen. Yeah, that's the movie. Well, that, no, no, that wasn't. That was Joe. What's that? Esther. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting my movies mixed up. But yeah, so that was the king, and that that particular king was Artaxerxes. For those that, um, just as a reference, Xerxes was from the line of Xerxes. So if you ever seen the movie 300 and the king Xerxes, that was along his line of the Medo-Persian Empire. So that's a reference point. You remember, if, for those who saw the movie 300, the, the, the kingdom was the Medo-Persian Empire. So they took over after Babylon. So this is the, the chest of silver. The, the chest, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, this part of you, right, of brass or bronze, um, and um, this part, this was the Grecian Empire. This was the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great. Who's heard of Alexander the Great? Right? So Alexander the Great. Now, let me explain why Alexander the Great is so important in history. Alexander the Great is important in history because Alexander the Great represents the switch or the change of of world powers from brown to white, what we know of, okay? Before, all of the nations that ruled before were countries of color, every single one of them. The Medo-Persians, the Egyptians, the Babylonians. Alexander the Great was the first 
European world leader. And so Daniel prophesied that Alexander the Great would come. In this very prophecy, um, actually it's in the next prophecy, he actually will pro he prophesies that when when the, uh, that, that, that the king of Greece would take over really quickly, and that when he takes over, he's gonna die before when he's young. Alexander the Great died at the age of 33. And then Daniel prophesies that his kingdom would be split into four. Right? And so his kingdom was split amongst his four generals because he had no seed. Daniel even prophesied that he would not have any seed, any heirs, so that his kingdom would be divided. So this is this, uh, this, 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 I forget what this is. The waste, thank you. I'm sorry, Lord. The waste. <laughs> the torso and the waist of bronze. And then he goes and says, and I saw these thighs of iron, these thighs of iron. Okay, now everything is that's said in this picture is really, really important. The head of gold, Babylon, the chest of silver, right? I want you to notice that in this image that is broken down, that from the top to the bottom, the value of the metal is higher. But as it goes further down, the metal is lose its value, but it, began, it it's stronger. So gold at the top, silver. Now gold is more valuable than silver, but silver is stronger than gold. Silver is more valuable than bronze, but bronze is stronger than silver. Bronze is more valuable than iron, but iron is stronger than bronze. So as you go from top to bottom, the metal, meaning this, these world powers, these nations that rule, they're going to rule, they're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, but their glory is going to lessen. So the glory of Nebuchadnezzar was up here. It was like gold. But then the glory of the Medo-Persian Empire. And so you also notice that when it talks about that there are certain um, things that have to be also captured when we talk about this, because we talk about this chest of silver, and when we talk about the chest, you, it's two, right? It's two, because you have two here. This is the Medo-Persian, the, the, um, the, Mid, the, the Medes and the Persians came together to overtake the Babylonians. Same thing when you get down to the legs of iron. Most people do not know that Rome was actually split into two. Rome was split into two. And then when you get to the feet, let's pay close attention to the feet. This is important. The feet were part iron, part clay. It says as if it was mixed with iron and clay. The reason this is important, iron and clay. He says, and just as iron and clay cannot stay together long, nor shall these countries be able to stay together. So what happens is you have these legs of iron that represent Rome. Rome was the superpower. But then this last country, it comes out of Rome. Comes out of, that's why it says the feet were of Rome, of, of, of iron mixed with clay. Clay is another term that's used for man because man was made out of clay. We have 10 toes and so it goes into that this last nation that is gonna rule is going to be a combination of 10 kingdoms, like your 10 toes. All right? All right. That was probably too much. Okay. All right. So that's chapter 2. Chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar. After having this dream of this great image, chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar builds a great image of himself. And he commands that everybody worship this image. Right. And he says, he says, if you don't worship this image, I'm going to throw you into a fiery furnace. That's where we hear the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego going into the fiery furnace. Hey, look, king, look, our God can save. But even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow before this idol. Right. And so um, many times in the scriptures, Nebuchadnezzar, um, there, there, there are certain things and you'll see. That's why it's important to understand this. There are certain things found here that are pulled on in Revelation. So remember, in order to understand the book of Revelation, you have to understand Daniel. There's two main books.
Daniel and Genesis. Daniel and Genesis. All right? Okay, so um, that's chapter 3. Chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. And he dreams of a great tree. The tree is cut down. He says, who, who can interpret this dream? He goes to Daniel, last Daniel, interprets the dream and tells him, hey, listen, you have been lifted up high, but you're going to get so filled with pride that you're going to say you did it yourself and God is going to chop you down. This is the first time that we're introduced to a type, a type of angel called a watcher. Mm -hmm. okay. This is a type of angel called a watcher. And these angels watch and report to God and they basically watch if we get too prideful. So this is a, a type of angel. Remember, there are there are three types of angels that we hear of throughout the Bible. There's cherubim, seraphim, and watchers. I mean, you can include the living creatures, but some some speculate the living creatures. Some of it may be figurative. Some, you know. So there's different thoughts or theories about that. So, um, so Nebuchadnezzar's dream. So he actually is made to live like a beast and eat the grass of the field. God chops him down and he does this for seven years, but God says in the dream, but I will maintain your kingdom. So even though he was living like a beast, like a maniac for seven years, his hair, the Bible says, grew like eagle's feathers. It said his nails grew like claws and he ate the grass of the ground for seven years, but God would not allow his kingdom to be taken. So he woke up out of it after seven years and said, God is God, and he came to himself. This was prophesied. Daniel prophesied that to him. Twelve months after, after Daniel explains his dream, Nebuchadnezzar is walking on his roof. He forgets all about it. He's walking on his roof, and as he's walking on his roof, he says, man, look at all that I have gained. This is what I've done. And the Bible says he heard a voice from heaven says, boom, shut it down. He was made to live like a beast. And he woke up and he gave glory to God. Okay, uh, chapter, that's chapter four. Chapter five, Belshazzar. Belshazzar uh, and the handwriting on the wall. We ever heard the term, the handwriting on the wall? This comes from Daniel chapter four, um, chapter five with Belshazzar. Now, even though the Bible says that Belshazzar is the son of Nebuchadnezzar, as I understand during these times, they considered a grandfather or a great-grandfather the father. They would call the, the, anybody who came from that person that father. So Belshazzar was actually not the father, uh, not the son of Nebuchadnezzar, but the grandson. His father's name was Nabonidus. Nabonidus, this is historians um, have shown. Nabonidus was actually king during that time. So when he calls him king, he was not really the king. Mm -hmm. He was a regent king. Nabonidus was away fighting the Medo-Persian Empire. So he left his son in charge. This is one of the reasons why uh, uh, Belshazzar, when he says, when he sees the handwriting on the wall and, he's, and he brings somebody in to interpret the handwriting on the wall, he says to, uh, he says to uh, Daniel, hey, listen, if you can interpret what we see on this wall, he says, I'll make you the third in the kingdom. And that's because he was the second in the kingdom. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions at, at any time, please feel free to fire them away. Yes. Is was Nebuchadnezzar the first in the Bible to actually make a, a, a image of himself? Like you, you know, like throughout the Old Testament before this, uh, everyone who's made idols, it's been idols of other things, mm. and you know, for him to be the the head of this idol, you know, um, in the dream. <clears throat> It's almost like he was the start of this downfall of people proclaiming themselves to be like God, pretty much, you know, and and that's I, when he, he created a golden image of himself. But that's the first time I know, um, at least in the scripture that I've read, um, that anybody has actually taken it upon themselves to, you know, proclaim themselves or, whatever, or make an idol of themselves. So um, I think this is a great point. I did not, I, I, I can honestly say that in my mind, I'm trying to go, go through the Bible and see, I don't think of anyone else making an idol unto themselves. So you, you are probably right on that one. That's great. That's a great, that's great. That's really good. 
Um, any anyone else? Just fire the questions away. All right. So Belshazzar. So um, after this takes place, that very night. So Daniel, when he comes and he interprets the, um, um, uh, what's it? When he interprets the um, writing on the wall, I believe the writing, if my memory serves me, let's say, Mene Mene Tekel Parsan, right? Which is in which is in the Hebrew, and it says, "I have you 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 have been weighed in the balance and found wanting." Right? Meaning, hey, you know, uh, we, we have weighed you and you are not sufficient. Mm. And the reason for this was because Belshazzar um, takes the, 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 uh, the, the vessels, the, the, what's the word, uh, the cups and all of the things from mm -hmm. uh, when they, t when they uh, destroyed Israel, they took all the things from the temple and they began to drink from them and party with them and, and, and have all types of lasciviousness with the items, the holy things of God. And so because of this great sin, God judged him immediately. And so after this, that night, the Medo-Persian Empire came in and killed him and took over. Babylon was done. Mm -hmm. Now, where is Babylon? Babylon is the location of modern day Iraq. Our first, our first hearing of Babylon is where? Genesis. First time we hear of Babylon is in Genesis when we read of the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel. The first king on the earth, Nimrod, was the king of Babylon, of Babel. Babel. The first king. And he was chocolate chocolate because he came from the people of Cush, which was of the line of Ham. Meaning the first king recognized in the Bible was Nimrod. And Nimrod is even seen, it's documented, his name is documented in other faiths. He is documented in history, in ancient history. Even going back to um, the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was a stone that actually, uh, if, for those who have heard of it, uh, they... It's the name of a software they use to uh, teach you how to speak different languages. Well, it comes from a stone that they found that had different languages, interpretation of different languages on it. And so it's believed that this was written after God separated the voices, I mean the languages, so that they could understand each other. So they had, tra um, they had uh, explained or translated the languages on the Rosetta Stone. All right? So Nimrod is the first king of the earth and was the one who led the effort to build the Tower of Babel. This is why Babylon comes up many times in Revelations. That's why I told you Daniel and Genesis explain Revelations. All right? Oh man, I'm going way over my time. Yes, okay. Yes, um, <laughs> all right. So that's chapter five. Chapter six is Daniel in the lion's den. And under in at this point, there's a new king in town. This is Darius. Now, now there were two kings. Darius was like a lower king of the Medes. The king of the Persians, I believe, was because there were there was Artaxerxes one two three, so I believe it was one of the um, Artaxerxes. Okay, that was the 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 main king, the main king. Okay, and um, he was a good king. He actually um, they they both actually helped Israel um, come out of Babylon, come out of Babylon, both of them. All right, that was that was chapter six. Now chapter seven, we're going to read through chapter seven. Because this is the second big vision. So all of these other things talk about what happened and uh, what happened to this one. This is the first chapter where Daniel gets a vision. See, before Nebuchadnezzar had a vision, Nebuchadnezzar had a vision, Nebuchadnezzar had a vision. Now, chapter 7 is the first time we see Daniel have a vision. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, verse 1, I'm going to read... Um, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. 
Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. All right? And four great beasts, four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. All right? Four great beasts. Now it's important in theology, the number four represents a few things. Number one, cleansing or purification, judgment, and there's a third one, time. Mm. It represents time. Let me explain. In Genesis chapter one, verse 14 through 19, God really creates time and seasons on the fourth day. So <clears throat> um, if you read um, that, that's where he creates, he said, and the, 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 the sun and the moon, he creates the, you know, he splits the, the day. He said, this will be for times and seasons. So four represents um, typically time, a time of purification or a time of judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> we remember that during the days of Noah, he reigned on the earth. 40 days okay um, Jesus fasted 40 days mm -hmm. right it was either judgment or purification it's a time of judgment or purification Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years to purge them right that's a time of purging um, Moses was in the mountain receiving the commandment of God for 40 days Mm -hmm. Right? It's purging, purging, right? Israel was in bondage for 400 years. Mm -hmm. So you'll see this thing about four. So it's really important we understand the four because that's when we get to the four horsemen of revelations. But that may be next week. All right, let's go. <laughs> now, when it says the sea, the sea is a reference to people. The beast came out of the sea. It's a reference to this, these beasts comes out of people. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the first beast, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. Listen to that. Looks like a lion, had eagle's wings. His wings were plucked. Um, thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Uh, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour my flesh. Um, now notice the, the bear. He said the second beast was like a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, so it was hunched over. Okay? I'll explain to you who those, what, what that's it, what that is. After this, I beheld and lo, another, a leper, which had upon the back of it a four, uh, on the back of it, four wings of a fowl. And the beast had also four heads. Four. Four. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, where was I? Okay. And dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the root and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Now, let's let's break this down. I considered the horns. Now, horns typically a horn was a pointy thing that sits on top of a, an animal, like mm -hmm. especially like herd type animals. Right. So he says, I considered the horn. A horn typically will represent one of two things, either a kingdom or a king. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, another little horn before whom three were plucked up by the root. 
This refers to kingdom or royal line that will be completely removed. Daniel chapter 2, verse 42 through 44. Does someone have that? Because I, I, I have your Bible. Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 42 through 44. Now he's going to explain what all of these beasts represent. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a cheat code on it. Verse, what verse? Verse 42 through 44. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall partly shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with marble clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So go back to, to the verse that talks about they shall mingle themselves. Because we touched on this last week. Uh, verse 43. Mm -hmm. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So in Daniel chapter 2, we see that what's going to happen when we talk about this 10 kingdoms. So remember, I went from um, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and then there's going to be one last kingdom that is a, an alliance of 10 nations. Right? Ten nations. And the Bible says that, that they're going to be like iron and clay. The iron is a reference that is somehow going to come out of Europe. This is going to be an alliance of like, like, that's going to come out of Europe. All right? And it says, but it's going to be mixed. But then it goes a little deeper. It says, uh, read that part again where it talks about they, they're going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So what is going to happen here is demonic principalities are going to come into covenant and alliance with men. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about this 10 nation that are going to this, 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 this alliance of 10 nations. He said they're going to come into a, a, a demonic alliance. However, it says, but just like you cannot mix iron and clay, it says that uh, because one is strong and one's weak, the strong um, and the weak will not be able to stay together. Now, we, we typically, when we see this, because we see these 10 toes, we automatically assume it's going to be five and five, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna be three and seven three and seven all right all right um so another little horn before whom so listen what it says in, in in verse eight i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn but whom before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and I'm out speaking great things. So let's break this down. So this hit, this first beast that we saw that was a lion, like a great lion. Um, it was like a great lion. I'm sorry, y'all, I moved a little bit. Uh, it was like a great lion. This also represented Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. The bear that was hunched over represented the Medo-Persian Empire. So both prophecies, both visions um, overlay each other. The third was a leopard, was a leopard right with four wings now note that the first feline was a lion the king of the jungle glorious with eagle's wings the second feline is a leopard which is uh a, 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 you know when you automatically our minds automatically go to the cheetah right um we think he's super fast mm -hmm. but the the, the leopard is is the the, 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 the the one that's looked over, right? So he's faster than a lion. He's smaller than a lion, so he's unexpected. And it said he had the wings of a fowl. It doesn't even give it a glorious bird's name. 
This is also Greece. So it's again, Alexander the Great. And the four wings represent the four generals that would take the kingdom afterwards. Okay, and then the last beast, he said, this beast was exceedingly fierce, was exceedingly fierce, mm -hmm. right? He said he had teeth like iron. Um, after this, uh, verse seven, I saw in the night vision of, of behold the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong, exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns like the ten toes. I considered the horns and behold, so I, I was watching the horn, I was watching the ten horns, and behold, um, and there came up amongst them another little horn, before whom the three of the first horns were plucked up by the root. So the root means the whole lineage, there's a whole royal lineage that's going to be plucked up. One of the three of these kings, when, when, when the little horn arises, this little king is going to arise. He's going to uproot three of the horns. Is this making any sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man. Like the eyes of a man. Meaning there's something different. Okay? And a mouth speaking great things. So this is, this is one of the first verses that talk about the Antichrist. This is a, um, a, a prophecy about the Antichrist. So when you hear this little horn, this is about the Antichrist. So the Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to uproot three kings out of the ten of this ten nation alliance. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the little horn represents a world leader that will lead this European alliance. This is the Antichrist. Now, here's a reference. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verses uh, 1 through 3. I'm going to read it. Now, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars or a crown of 12 stars. And we know that that woman, some people would say, oh, that woman represents Mary. No, this woman represents Israel. Uh, because this is a reference to Joseph's dream in Genesis. Remember, revelations, you need Genesis. Right? Remember, remember Joseph had a dream. He saw, he saw, um, he saw his the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bow down before him, which were Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. His mom and dad were um, were Jacob and Leah was not Rachel, right? So he sees this, okay? All right, so he sees his mom, his dad, because remember, at this time, his mom is all, uh, is his mom dead? I think his mom, Rachel, is dead at this time. And he says, he says, do you think, uh, well, it could be Rachel. It could be Rachel. Um, that, that's a, there's a little bit, bit of theological debate on that. But any, either way, so he sees the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, which are his 11 brothers, and they bow down before him. So this woman in Revelation chapter 12 represents Israel. Okay. Because she, what is, what is she wearing? It says, now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. That's Jacob. Because because Jacob says immediately, he says, are you saying, I can get you saying that the 11 stars, which are your brothers going to bow to you. But when you said the sun and the moon, you said me and your mama will bow down to you. So she is clothed with the vision that Joseph had. And here's the thing. We talked about this. We touched on this last week. Um, we touched on this last week that Joseph and Daniel's story are almost identical. Both were taken captive. Both interpreted dreams. Both were elevated by non-believing kings who received visions from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's good. All right. Wrap up time. Um, now, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, listen to this, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads, ten horns. 
seven crowns or diadems on his head. Ten horns. This dragon that we talked about, that old sea, right? Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 4, uh, gives us another picture of another, um, another figure. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven hordes, ten hands. Seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue 42 months. This is all of this. Notice it says that when he saw the beast, he said, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet was the feet of a, a bear and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, which are the four uh, uh, the four beasts that are exhibited in Daniel chapter 7. Mm -hmm. But it's the reverse. He says, the leopard, the bear, the lion. Daniel says, the lion, the bear, the leopard. And he's that beast. So the dragon is Satan. The beast is the Antichrist. The beast, another term for the Antichrist is son of perdition, which means son of hell. Mm -hmm. Son of perdition. Um, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit. This is Daniel, back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head were like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. This is one of the first instances of somebody seeing the God the Father. Daniel actually gets a glimpse of God the Father. He's referred to as the Ancient of Days. All right. Um, notice he has white garments, hair like wool. If you've ever seen a sheep, a hair, a, a sheep's hair is not straight. Right? That should tell us something. Okay? A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld till even the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came from the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near, near before him and there was given him a thought dominion glory a kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away his kingdom that and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed now this is a picture Daniel sees God the father greeted by God, God the son he says, I saw one who looked like the son of man approach in the clouds. He approached the ancient of days and the ancient of days gave him dominion and power and authority. So, um, I guess this is probably a decent place to stop. <laughs> I don't really want to overdo it. Y'all know how I get excited about this stuff. Oh, yeah. um, but but I, I wanna I wanna um hold on, y'all give me two more minutes. <laughs> Verse 15, and Daniel was grieved, I Daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass. That means, remember, iron was Rome, brass was Greece. He's saying both Europe, it's Europe, 
This is the northern countries. And, and it's notice how he pulls all of this stuff back in. Okay? Um, yeah. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. This is a king, a world leader. This is the Antichrist. Revelations 13. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So there's going to be an alliance of ten kingdoms that are going to give the world the blues. And verse 24, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, from the first ten, right? And he shall subdue three kings. Remember, the weak. And there's the seven strong, the weak. That's the seven, right? Let's go. Um, he shall be different from the ten. The Antichrist will come in and put down three up out of the ten kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now, what is that? A time and times and the dividing of time. A time is a year. Times is two years, and the dividing of time is half a year, three and a half years, right? Three and a half years. So this is half of the seven-year tribulation. And a reference to that is in Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. I don't have it. Um, if, if somebody can read it real quick. I only got a, like three more verses, so let's just kind of power through that. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. I don't know when I did my, my physical Bible. I mean, I can pull it up here. But. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things mm -hmm. and blasphemy. And the power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. And he opened his mouth and then blasphemy against God to blasphemy, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. And then that dwell in heaven. So 40 and 2 months is 3 and a half years. Revelations talk about. 42 months, it's three and a half years. If you also go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, it says the dragon was given. Read, can you read 12, 6? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two, a thousand two hundred and three score Which a score is 20, so three score is 60. 1,260 days, which if you divide it by, and we're looking at the Jewish calendar, which is a lunar, um, solar lunar calendar, they have 355 days, 355, um, so, uh, I'm sorry, 355 divided by 1260 is three and a half years, three and a half years. Oh, okay. Um, so we use the Gregorian calendar. Um, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it, until the end and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him hitherto is the end of the matter as for me daniel my cogitation much troubled me and my countenance changed in me but i kept the matter in my heart we went through the whole chapter seven which is a major prophetic chapter um thank you okay <laughs> Um, any, 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 any questions? Yes. Well, uh, somebody on, on, on Facebook said, asked, uh, did Pharaoh ever create idols of unto himself? Did, did Pharaoh ever create? We don't, we don't know of that. I mean, we can look at the, some of the structures that they built, mm -hmm. such as the, the Sphinx or the, you know, um, many, you know, they, they would deify themselves, right. you know, with their tombs and things. Mm -hmm. But as far as, um, Making us, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure kings of old made statues unto themselves, but as far as them being documented in the Bible, we don't, I don't think we see of any. And I think this is the significance of this particular one, that it was a great one, that anybody, anytime you heard 
any music, you would have to bow to it. And why is that significant? Because Satan was the angel of music. Is that anytime you heard the symbol, the this, the this. So what we saw is that those same things that were built into Saint Lucifer, remember when he was mm -hmm. Lucifer, son of the morning, as he was the angel, the Bible said he was the, the cherub that covered. He was a cherubim angel. Okay? So, so that's the significance. And all of that plays because in Revelations, the false prophet raises up an image and says you must worship the image. So this is why you need to understand Daniel in order to unlock Revelation. Revelation will make no sense unless, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna make any sense, I, I shouldn't say that, but but there's so much left on the table that, 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 that it's gonna be hard to understand. We're gonna walk through this. Even that four horsemen, the four horsemen, they represent, mm, I can't wait till we get there. Listen, um, any, any other questions? I gotta watch these questions. Go for it. <laughs> um, why did God protect us? Because he loves us. Remember the, the scripture that you pray every morning. For God so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us that much. He loves us that much. Yes. Um, what I don't know if we if you covered it, uh, um, but the part about the, the lion with the wings that was plucked. Yes. Okay. So that was Nebuchadnezzar. Remember how he was? It, he had the vision and he was lifted up high, and then he was brought down. Mm -hmm. It said he was lifted up high, and then he was plucked and brought down to live like a man. This was Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So rather than these particular beasts. And so uh, also I wanted to, for those that may have been asking, what was the, the three ribs in the mouth of the mm -hmm. bear? What was that? So during this time, before uh, the Medo-Persian empire took over Babylon, they were mounting attacks and they were able to take three main countries, three major countries, Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. So these particular conquests really solidified their power. So that's why it's three ribs in the mouth of the bear. Yeah. Um, God, God, sometimes God loves us and he has all the power because he's Lord. He can have any power. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm so, see, see, God has so much power. Thank you. He has so much power. He's all powerful. This is part of the reason why when we talked about in the beginning, we said, listen, like, should you fear the book of Revelation? It really depends on what perspective, right? If I'm saved, if I'm saved and saved in the Lord and I'm walking in the Lord and I'm living, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Then the book should not scare me but it may should scare me to tell somebody else mm -hmm. about Jesus. Hey, listen, I don't want you to be left in this, right? Because, because we're seeing prophecy fulfilled. Remember one of the prophecies that Jesus said, he said the gospel must be preached in every nation before the end times comes. We have now got it to a place where the gospel has been preached because of the internet. Mm -hmm. The gospel is literally in every nation. So that was the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. That was the prerequisite. So we don't know when that last day can happen. This is one of the reasons why when we see what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, like many of us are looking at it and we are definitely praying for Ukraine. But also consider this, that, that this could be a setup for the world to say, we need, a tent, we need an alliance, a stronger alliance than what we had. Mm right mm -hmm. this rising of putin mm -hmm. this aggression by putin is now making the other countries that before did not want to be a part of nato say we need to be a part of nato mm -hmm. understand what's going on on the world stage mm -hmm. we're seeing this thing play out the bible says in the last days that because the love of many shall wax 
told. Mm -hmm. We're seeing this. Mm -hmm. Stars walking up on stage and smacking yes. other stars. We've never seen anything like this. We've never seen anything like this before in our lives. And so now we're seeing this, like people don't love each other like they did. Right? And so understanding what we need to be looking for. How do you spot the Antichrist? People have asked questions like, okay, will the Antichrist come after the rapture? We don't know that. In fact, there, there I, can, I can, you know, I can argue, you know, you're taught... Um, to argue both sides, right? So there is an argument that he may come, we may be in that first part of it. There's an argument that it may, remember when we talked about pre, post, uh, pre, mid, or post. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I don't think, I don't think too much about the, 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 the post because I think like, if I had to wait till after the seven years, it was like, hey, Lord, like, what's the point, right? So I don't <laughs> think there's much of an argument for the post, but there is an argument for the pre, meaning before the seven years of tribulation, and there's an argument for the mid, because it's not until that middle point, that three and a half years of that seven years, that the Antichrist is really going to go all out on attack. So you may be thinking he's the best leader ever. And then three and a half years, and we're going to dive into that, that what that three and a half years is all about. And we're going to do that over the next few weeks. Um, so, uh, Glenn, any questions? <laughs> Seriously, like, like it's, it's good. Like, it's, are there any questions online? Mm -hmm. This is good to get your questions out because a lot of times we don't, we don't act, we, you know, Bible says you have not because you ask not, right? So there may be a little bit of knowledge out there that you, that, that's just sitting on the table just because we don't ask that question. We may think, oh, this is a stupid question. There is no stupid question. Mm -hmm. There's no stupid questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. I think we've, we've got, we've answered all the questions. Okay, so let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord. We thank you, God. You say where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst. Lord God, we pray that this, 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 this teaching will be a help to someone. That it may um, cause question, then the quest to, 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 to dig a little deeper, Lord God. And Father, we just give you praise, Lord, and honor, Lord. We ask that your hand of provision, protection, um, promotion, Lord God, would be on your church, on your body of believers. Lord God, that we can live your purpose out loud, Lord. Now, Father, if there's anyone listening, Lord God, that is maybe tuning in, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for them. They're listening and they say, you know, I don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of my sins. I need to know this Jesus, who this whole book is all about. I may not know everything, but I just need, I need to know him. If that's you, just pray with me right now. And for those that are watching, just be in prayer right now. For those people that are watching, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Say this with me. If you're in your seat and you're saying, you know what? I don't know Jesus Christ and by my sin. Just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I'm in need of a savior. I believe, God, that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on an old rugged cross for my sins. But I believe that you rose him from the grave with all power in his hand. And I accept you as the Lord of my life, as my Lord and my savior for the rest of my life. From this moment, I accept you, God, and I will never be the same again. Just say, I'll never be the same again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We just pray right now with them, Lord God, that are making that decision to come closer to you. In Jesus' name. And Father, there's those out there that are in need of prayer. Maybe there's you need healing in your body. In Jesus' name. Wherever you're doing, if you're in a stationary place, I want you to place your hand in the area where that pain may be. And we're gonna pray. The Bible says, "If two touch and agree, ask and anything shall be done." Hallelujah! I need you to understand the anointing that is in that that's in the house, that is in the life of the believer. In Jesus' name, we pray right now that the healing power of the Holy Ghost would fill, rest, reside, and abide, heal every nerve. Every, the swelling, there's swelling, someone has swelling, 
Hallelujah. Heal it at the root in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Someone has been dealing with hair loss. I don't know who this is, but you've been dealing with hair loss. I just need you to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just as Samson, God is going to restore your hair in Jesus' name. Receive that in Jesus' name. Glory to God in the highest. I thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God. Now, saints of God, you may notice that we don't necessarily, we don't do, um, as we close out, um, we typically don't do a call for membership. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're more insistent about citizenship. We want to get you in the kingdom, right? We want to get you in the kingdom. Okay? Now, if you do want to be a part, you guys can feel free to contact us and we'll, we'll walk you through that process. Now, at this time, listen, we never want to walk away without giving folks an opportunity to sow a seed. Now, listen, we actually have a link. So, uh, Sister Faith, if you can drop the link in the, in the chat. Um, uh, or you can go to our website at uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 91 Ministries dot church, right? And there's a there's a link you can go on there to sow a seed, and it says um, how to support the, the ministry. Okay, so you can click there, and we're running a campaign, so you can actually sow that way. Um, we're getting some other things straightened out, so we can open up some other means of taking in funds. Okay. And so, um, but right now that's the, our primary method of taking it on. All right. So, um, and, uh, for those that want to sow in cash or, um, and, and any other methods, we, we, we can, um, we'll definitely receive that. And we thank you so much for your ministry and for your gifts and your, um, seeds of love. So we thank you so much for joining us this evening. I know we went a little longer than normal. Um, but, uh, you know, we want to, we want to give folks the word of God. So with that being said, let's just close out with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you just for meeting us where we are, for resting us, for meeting us here, Lord God. Now, Lord God, as we go to our different places or if we are home watching this virtually, Father, we pray that your anointing would just fill this room, fill that space wherever they are, Lord God. In Jesus' name. And listen, if you have a testimony, make sure you reach out to us. If it's if something we said, reach out to us through, through, through our Facebook page or contact us through our website. Hallelujah, Father, because we want to hear that. It's going to encourage and strengthen faith in Jesus' name. Father, take us home safely. Bless us on the job, in the workplace, in the career path, wherever we go, wherever we tread our feet. Thank you for victory. And we say this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, and the power of your wonderful Holy Spirit. And let the church say amen. 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 God bless you all. We will see you again Sunday at 9 a.m. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.